Good afternoon and welcome to BDTV. Um, we're delighted today to be joined by Pete Riddleston. Uh, Pete's a, he's a learning and development specialist in the legal sector. He's got a, a lovely combination of, of intellect and, and humility, which which always makes him a, a, a pleasure to spend time with and, ha and have a chat have a chat with. But it's, especially today, um, we're hoping that he'll bring some of the insight which he has from being learning and quality director at, at LawNet. LawNet's a, a community of over 70 progressive mid-sized firms. So welcome along, Pete. Thank you very much, Pete. Uh, it, it's good to be here and thank you very much for that introduction. Oh, not, not, not at all. Not, and, 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 and I mean it. So um, there, there's so much going on, as, as, as we know, in the legal sector, so much, so much change and disruption and opportunities Hi. Uh, let's start if we may with with what you're doing as as a community at lawnet and what's really what's really keeping you busy at the moment yes yeah, you're really happy to talk about that i guess the first thing uh, to say is maybe just a little bit about uh lawnet um yeah. we're a member owned community of 73 law firms um based all around the uk so uh offices of our firms all over the place and our firms are generally sort of SME sector so sort of between two and about 20-25 million turnover we've got some um, who are a bit outside that at either end um, but that that sort of generally sort of describes the network it's very much based on a non-compete sort of ethos focused very much on sharing of knowledge information experience um, and our role is is to help our members become better law firms in essence sort of better businesses in that sense um, and the, a, a progressive mindset that our firms have is really helpful in helping us do that mm. in terms of the challenges and some of the things that are on our agenda at the moment well i'm going to i'm actually going to start with um learning and development i think because that's that's like one of my core cool responsibilities yeah so yeah. one of the things that's been really interesting over the last 12 months or so obviously we we delivered our learning program solely through webinars for a long time and we're starting to see a bit of a shift a bit of a shift back towards people maybe wanting to to be in a room together network in person so one of the things that is on our agenda is to take our events a little bit more back to being face to face over the next few months we've made a slow start to that because our webinar pro program has been really well received uh, but one of the things that we're going to be doing in the next few months is, is a few more in-person sessions to provide our uh, opportunities for our, our community our members to get together um, and network and talk to each other face to face. We've actually got a couple of events coming up over the next few weeks. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, those are full. So we've yeah, the, the spaces have been taken up. So that does kind of illustrate yes. the fact that uh, we, we think our members are keen to get back to some uh, in-person events. Yeah, uh, and, and we'll see how that goes. And 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 happy to travel as uh, as in 2018, 2019, or yeah, or longer. I think so. Uh, I think what we'd like to do as well is, is previously our, our learning program was quite focused on events in London. I think we'd like to sort of, I talk about taking it on tour really um, and going to some different parts of the UK where our member, uh, where our members are based and so that the, the whole LawNet membership can access uh, different parts of that learning program. So I'm always quite keen to do that. It makes it easier for our members to access the courses and then they'll have a balance between webinars and those in-person events. And we'll use the in-person events when the content really seems to uh, dictate that. So it's when we're doing workshops or particularly interactive sessions, those can often work better face-to-face. -face. They can be done really well online too, but uh, that face-to-face that -face interaction can really help. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. For, for some things where it's, um you know from our own world where it's about reading body language cues and uh and, and knowing how to interact face to face it's it, it's so much richer when you can be in a room with people um so good that's encouraging to hear that people are getting back back again and, and i know you run you run the various discussion groups uh and and the one i've been involved in obviously around marketing and, and bd what's 
what what's top of the agenda across those at the moment? What what is occupying the minds of of law firm leaders? Well, it's been really interesting actually because the, the the conversation sort of started to change a bit over the last twelve months. I guess we've had a big focus uh, on recruitment and retention with uh, firms thinking a lot about how to attract and retain talent within their businesses. Uh, the, the 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 war the war for talent I think has been talked about quite a lot over the twelve mo- last twelve months or so probably a bit longer actually yeah yeah that seems to be changing over- though I, I I sense that there there's a it, it it's settling a little bit are 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 you are you seeing that yeah I think so I think there was a, there was a time when there was a lot of movement between different firms and that does seem to be settling down and I think. One of the conversations that's emerging from that is very much around talent retention and how you can make sure that you get the right people into your business and then keep them there and develop them. And that's certainly becoming more of a topic, I think, as we as we move out of that period when there was a lot of movement of of staff between different firms. So uh, certainly seeing more of a uh, a focus on culture and firms yeah. working hard to have the culture that they want and then be able to demonstrate that both internally but also very much to people who who might be looking to join them going yeah. forward so it becomes part of that recruitment and retention exercise and i think one of the changes is people are starting to talk a little bit more about how they can measure that yes. and what they can yeah. do to actually demonstrate that in 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 numbers and figures i guess it's quite a hard thing to do but we're certainly seeing more talk about that or hearing more about that yes i i I was i was going to say just just that how how do firms begin to put some substance some evidence behind the claim that many of them have that they've got a distinct uh, culture well i i think there's been a lot of work done on staff surveys and looking yeah. at the results of those and we we heard more of our firms doing those sorts of i mean they've done them consistently over quite a long period but probably more so during the pandemic and following the pandemic and obviously that can give you some quite rich data on how how people feel about their experience of working for their firms but then i think there are uh, there are uh, more people looking at certifications to help mm-hmm. them do that Yes. So accreditations that that link to that, but also perhaps link to that sort of wider ESG um, agenda. Yep. That's another topic that is coming much more uh, into the sort of lines of sight of our, our firms. We're hearing a lot more talk about that at the moment. I'd, I'd say that's probably one of those hot topics. Yep. And, you know, when you're in looking at those environmental, social governance issues, then that very much links to your the experience of your employees and how they are um how they're getting on so we're we're starting to see uh that become more significant as one of those hot topics as well yeah yeah no we we're absolutely seeing that as well if i may um mention for anyone anyone who's who's watching this um we've just completed a bit of research in uh, much of it in the legal mar- market some in finance around Higher firms communicating those values because we're not we're not um, you know ESG consultants, but where where the focus is is around okay as firms are starting to make change substantial changes and um, uh, in, in terms of how they relate to community and staff welfare and governance and so on, um, we we've seen that a lot of the firm leaders aren't yet really fluent in how they're bringing that to life how they're talking to clients and future staff um about it uh and even how they're, how they're writing about it when, when you know when they're trying to win win business and so on so so i i see that that has been there's been more conversation around that in the last in the last six months than, than we've ever seen before i suppose that goes hand in hand with the the talent as well people looking for purpose and looking to work somewhere they they share the values yeah absolutely i think it 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 really does link into that whole question about purpose and values i think you're spot on there Mm. and i think you know with a lot of the commentary that we see suggests that that's much more important at the moment for people 
Yes. Uh, yes. So I guess that sort of drives that conversation. And I, yeah. I'm expecting that we'll have a lot more conversations around that, you know, mm -hmm. probably in some of our, our discussion groups that we run around um, ESG issues and um, how, how you can demonstrate those sorts of credentials. Yes. And, and, yeah. and, something, something, Pete, uh, uh, I often see you involved with and supporting is, is around law care and, uh, and, and uh, you know, more cohesive well-being of, of, of lawyers at work and so on. I suppose that's, that's one way that some firms are putting their money where their mouth is. And, yeah, very much so. Uh, yeah, I, one of the things that I do in addition to my role at Lawnet is that um, I'm a champion for for law care. So you know the the mental health and wellbeing charity for the legal sector, uh, and and we did a, a a podcast before Christmas. I think it was released around November time, where we were three of our member firms were talking about the initiatives that they have to address and support good well-being good mental health in their firms it was a it was a great discussion actually it was really inspiring because i was you know some of the, the initiatives and the way that they'd structured those were were brilliant and the thing that really struck me was that they weren't interested in ticking boxes it was all about linking it to their their business plan, their overall strategy for their firms. And it was seen as an integral part of that rather than, you know, just being something that you do to make sure that you, you've you done something to support that. It was much more integrated, um, done with, you know, with, with real sort of purpose behind it with the yeah. aim of, of supporting all of their staff. Yeah, yeah, good, good to hear. And you, you talk about, you talked about the um, strategic commercial agenda. Have you, how have you seen uh, looking looking um, more directly at, at the financial side of things and the operating models? How how have you seen your firms change as as we've moved through the last two years? It's been really interesting because obviously I think everyone would have been really concerned at the beginning of the pandemic, but you know financial performance generally seems to have been really really strong. Yeah. That's been helped, I suspect, by the residential conveyancing. Uh, that, that the home buying sector, that side of things being strong throughout, really, that will always help. But firms have performed well in in you know pretty much all areas of their business, which has been really good to see. And I know that some of them have been able to sort of price work differently to uh, to, to to help with that as well. So you know commercially, I would say that they've done pretty well and even with the suggestion of economic downturn that we're starting to see and i know there's been a lot of talk about you know going back to conveyancing maybe less transactions over the next few months we've done some pulse surveys with our firms and and they're still pretty confident in terms of financial performance going forward oh that's good so that, that's, good that's encouraging um so, so good to hear that confidence are they um you mentioned you mentioned about this, you know, them displaying some flexibility in terms of pricing going through the pandemic. Do you, do you think? Do you think that's going to continue? I suppose there's going to be more. Uh, there's going to be more robust negotiations around around price with with firms of the size you're you're talking about. Yeah, I'm sure that will happen. You know, as if there is a risk of work sort of contracting less work around, then then price obviously can become more of an issue. Yeah, I think the crucial thing is the conversations that people have around price with their clients though yeah. and i think you know if we are facing some sort of economic downturn those conversations become even more important so getting the scope of matters right at the start giving clients consistent information about pricing and revisiting it you know if something changes with a matter having the conversation with the client to talk about that i think is really important so those the communication really clear communication with clients is is going to be really important for firms so that they can you know manage risk and manage their client relationships going forward because inevitably when we see a, a tighter market you're more likely not necessarily going to happen, but there must be a greater likelihood of clients, you know, being more robust in those conversations. And, and as a result, you know, the possibility of complaints, I guess, goes up as well. Yeah. So it's a really, that, that client communication is really important, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really agree. I, I think there's, um, there's two things I often hear when, when, when clients are, um, are thinking about price negotiation. One, one, one is, and the central thing is exactly what you just mentioned, and, and the second is, a, is a really difficult psychological thing. I don't know if your firms are doing anything around it, but the ability not to chase everything, uh, to, to, to say no to some work, and, and to do. To do it in a way which isn't going to ruin the client or referral relationship. Um, I, I, so it's that it's that it's a horrible Americanism, but it's that that sort of intentional development of the firm and where they you know where they want to be focusing their time. And so so Absolutely. so hard so hard now though where 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 people want to be seen to be busy and seen seen to be active. I don't know. Do you do do any of your members are are they being more um, is there more clarity in terms of directions? You think, or do you think, do you think they're ebbing towards that that desire just simply to to grow and to be busy and to deliver the hours that promised to deliver? It's such a difficult balance to strike, isn't it? But I, I think, in general, what I see is firms having you know real clarity about identifying the clients that they want to act for and the types of work they want to do. Mm. And I think maybe the pandemic with them being very, very busy and some of the, the, the pressures on recruitment have helped them focus on that and, and yeah. emphasise the need to focus on, on being very deliberate about identifying who you want to act for and what you want to be doing for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear that right, right across finance as well. A, a number of our clients, uh, you know, you sit down and talk to them about what's in their pipeline and what are they trying to work. I think, I'm terrified of, of winning more work at the moment because we're so under resourced and uh, and we've really got to deal with that. So um yeah, I'm I'm glad it's been discussed at least. And what Pete, what what's life like out, outside of law care and law net rather as well as law care? So what am I up to out, outside? Well, um <laughs> It's January, so that for me is always a focus on trying to make sure I'm I'm getting outside a fair bit. So uh, I'm currently doing uh, Red January, which used to be run every day in January, but it's now much more about movement and exercise, doing something like that every day. So okay. uh, running plays a, a big part in my life. So I, I'm I'm doing that at the moment. I agree. Uh, very much so. Even even in the frost. Yeah. Yes, I was out this morning. I'll admit running pretty slowly. Because I don't <laughs> <want to sit laughs> <over>. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Trying to get out every day at the moment and and uh, and get a few miles in. Uh, there's a, a another exercise challenge that I'm taking part in this month, which is called Doddy Aid. Uh, you may have heard of Doddy Weir, yes, uh, yeah, former Scotland, Scotland and British yeah. Lions international who who very sadly died of motor neurone disease uh, back in November last year. So. Uh, uh, it's all about raising funds and raising awareness of um, motor neurone disease and trying to raise funds to support people with that and also support um, research into uh, finding a cure for it. So yeah, that, that's yeah. a really uh, a great exercise challenge for, no, good for uh, you. January. Good for you. You're, you're inspiring with your running, Pete. I remember uh, talking one time in London, you said you were giving away old suits, which which were now like a that like a marquee on you um I, I could i could do with that but also absolutely share your view of um how good it is for a bit of peace of mind and a bit of, a bit of clarity as well so, absolutely yeah. yeah running is is great for mental health that's yeah. for sure yeah great well pete it's been it's been a pleasure as i knew it would to to have you here the 20 minutes have gone it gone in a flash thanks very much for sharing what you're seeing in the market and, and for committing some time to us today. Thanks very much, Pete. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Cheers. Speak soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.